What's happening, people of God? Jenny Foley here. Uh, I am the founder of uh, John 836 Ministries. That's the scripture that um, encompasses my entire life. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Uh, it's a privilege and honor to be here with you today. And there's something that the Lord's really been dealing with me about for a while now. Um, and, and I can't let it go because I don't think that we've seemed to um, capture the capacity of, of what he wants to do uh, with this uh, particular weapon. We all, um, or I think that we all understand that spiritual warfare is real uh, and that we have weapons, but I don't think we understand exactly all the weapons we have and how to use them. So I just want to look at a couple of things. We're going to go through some scripture. We're going to talk about it. We're going to break it down uh, and, and see what it is the Lord's going to say today that maybe he hasn't said before when, when I've talked about this. So uh, one of the things that I always go back to like in the beginning is um, because we have this, um, let's say, this ideology that we can just, we just need to sit still and that um, if we don't talk about the enemy or if we don't um, say things that he's just going to ignore us. But really, all that does is allow him to harass us and we don't know it because we refuse to acknowledge it. Um, Matthew eleven twelve tells us that the kingdom of heaven suffers violent and the violent people take it by force. Uh, we're not going to um, take the kingdom. or we're, It's not going to be received passively. We're going to have to do something. Uh, to be violent or suffer violence means to inflict force. The violent means to use force and be strong. And by force means to seize, carry off, snatch, claim for oneself. So what is it that you need to claim? You need to snatch it up. Snatch it out of the atmosphere and claim it for yourself. But just by sitting there and, and hoping and wishing that it lands for you... Um, that's not going to get anywhere. We got to get a little violent. I say, like, I like to say, we got to get a little wretched and, and and go after some stuff in the realm of the spirit, uh, so we can begin to understand how to actively war. You know, I mean, what is spiritual warfare? It's fighting against the works of evil. We don't just sit there. We have to do something. We have to say something. We have to act something out. Sometimes uh, do a prophetic act. So I always like to ask my my students when I teach this: Have you actually warred in the spirit over the situation you're dealing with? Have you violently taken any lives by force? For me, from what I came out of, I like to go into the deep, dark places where nobody else will go and violently snatch lives away from the enemy for Jesus. I, I just like to do it. It's, it's because nobody else likes to go in those places. So I like to go there and do the things that nobody else wants to do. Uh, because for me, I needed somebody to do that for me, you know? So really, I just want to, let's look uh, at Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. We all know what these scriptures are. We do. And I'm going to read it. I'm going to start verse 10 and I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation. And it's talking about spiritual warfare. It says, Now, beloved ones, I have saved these most, most important truths for last. They're the most important truths. And they're saving them for last. And when I originally read that, I was like, Oh, God. Does that mean, because we're getting at a place where we're starting to understand what deliverance is. We're starting to allow deliverance back in the church a little bit. We're starting to understand what warfare is. People who wouldn't acknowledge it before, we're starting to understand it just a little bit more. So we're getting closer and closer to the end. Be, nat be supernaturally infused with strength, strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in you and through you. And then, of course, it tells us to put on our armor. Which is something um, that we all should we, we all should know and do at this point. But what does it mean to actually go to war? Like we're talking about spiritual warfare. It means we're going to go to war. It, it, we got to declare, begin, uh, begin something. We have to see active services in war. We're not just um, letting everybody else go do it. We need to uh, deploy ourselves and go do it. Whether um, we have different fields in the military that you can go into. Some of us are specialists in, in, in uh, prophetic intercession. Some of us are specialists on the front line. Some of us are specialists in the healing um, ministry. But we have to go to war in some capacity. And if you look at a military, it's a group or group of people that are giving power to defend something. So let me ask you this. What is it you're defending? What is it you need to stand up and do? And they're not just said, they're not just told to go stand on the front line and defend the people or go stand on the wall and defend your leader without any weapons. They're armed and dangerous. And the body of Christ needs to get to a point where we understand the totality of what we've been given. That'll preach in itself. We got to understand the capacity in which our weapons operate and what what weapons we actually have. We have a, an arsenal of weapons, but we tend to just want to rely on a few. 
But when you go to war, you're also ordered to attack. You're not you're not ordered um, always just to stand there and stand guard. So you're told to go attack, push back. The Lord told me the other day, Jenny, stop being on defense so much. And I thought about when I played sports, when I played basketball. On defense, I was always trying to keep the other team from scoring. But he said it's time to go on offense, which means we have to advance the kingdom of God. We have to go after what it is that we're supposed to have and stop allowing the enemy to push us back in a hole or push us back in a closet or push us away from what it is that we're supposed to do. And why is it we do this? Because we have spiritual strongholds in our lives. What is that? It's a habitual pattern or thought built into one's life. Satan likes to capture the minds of people. He comes after our minds. This is where the whole battle even it begins. And it should stop there. We should not let it go any further. Because once we learn how to, to control our thoughts, when we learn how to take everything, every thought captive, and we'll get into that in a minute, then it's a whole lot better. We understand, okay, no, this is from Satan. No, this is actually one of my thoughts. you got to learn how to take those things captive and not allow them uh, to push you back and keep you from advancing advancing in what it is you're supposed to advance and do the battles in our mind which is why we often can't compete in uh, spiritual warfare because we think that we're not supposed to that's for somebody that's for the apostles and prophets no people god that's for everybody let's look at second corinthians 10 i'm going to start in verse i'm gonna go ahead and read verse 2 because i really like what paul says here now, I plead with you that when I come, don't force me to take a hard line with you, which I'm willing to do if I need to. By daring to confront. See, this goes back when we started in the beginning. You have to be able to confront things in the kingdom of God. You don't just sit and let it all happen. Because you're, you're, you, you refuse to confront, um, regardless of what it is, you refuse to say, listen, that's not right. Or listen, so people hurt your feelings. You don't want to talk to them. You don't want to tell them they hurt your feelings. Then you're going to in internally push those down and create more issues for yourself. This, this is not what I intend to do. This is what's coming out. Uh, you're going to push those emotions down and you're not going to be able to advance anything. You're going to be stuck in this vicious cycle of being broken and hurt because you refuse to confront anything. Confrontation is necessary in the kingdom of God. Now, you ain't got to be bad about it. You ain't got to be bitter. You ain't got to be mad. You ain't got to be vicious. But it is healthy to have conversations. It's healthy to confront things. Now, I'll talk to humans a lot better than I will when I when I confront things in the spiritual realm. Now, I ain't going to play with no demon. I ain't going to tolerate it. I'm going to confront it, and I'm going to move on because I have all power and authority. Amen? Now, uh, by daring to confront those who mistakenly believe that, that we are living by the standards of the world, not by the Spirit's wisdom and power. For although... We live in the natural realm. We do not wage a military campaign employing human weapons, using manipulation, witchcraft, to achieve our aims. See, I'm going to go down all these rabbit trails. Witchcraft. We want to be prophetic. We want to operate in the gifts, but we're so hungry. We're so hungry for gifts because people see gifts that we bypass the process. And we start operating from a realm of divination instead of uh, the, the realm of, of holiness. And then we operate in witchcraft. And we're starting to tear people down and pull them down to achieve our agenda instead of God's agenda. We'll save that for another day. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture, I'm talking about war, we capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that it, about, it bow in obedience to the anointed one. So we got to learn to take our thoughts captive in, the, in, in spiritual warfare and life in general. You gotta learn to take your thoughts captive. Are you operating from a place of rejection? If so, then you gotta you gotta filter everything through here. If you got a, a spirit of rejection or a root of rejection, you're gonna have to filter everything and take every thought captive and learn to dismantle the enemy before he takes root in your life. And this is one of my favorite parts. Since we are armed with such dynamic weaponry, see, we don't even know what weaponry we have yet. We stand ready to punish any trace of rebellion. And this is my favorite part right here. As soon as you choose complete obedience. You can't choose partial obedience. You've got to do it in its totality. You've got to do what God says. You're going to have to choose to be completely obedient to God in your life. Choose to be completely obedient in your actions. Um, you, you know, sometimes we live this life in our head that we don't live out loud. 
because we want to be obedient to God, but we haven't learned to subject our our, um, our soul and our flesh to what God says. So when we learn to do that, we, we choose complete obedience. Amen? Listen, we have all kinds of warfare weapons, but the one that the Lord said to talk about, the one that I can't seem to shake, is the weapon of praise. What is it? We could go on for days and days. Praise is a powerful, powerful weapon in deliverance and spiritual warfare. See, when we, we praise, things begin to happen in the unseen realm. Things begin to happen in the realms that we don't see with our natural eyes. In the Old Testament, the people of God didn't have the name of Jesus as a weapon. See, Jesus made it a whole lot easier for us. We have the name of Jesus. We have the blood of Jesus. But in the Old Testament, they didn't have that. What did they have? They had praise. Listen, when we're in warfare, the Bible tells us that nothing carnal will work. I think the um, NEV version of that says that our weapons are divinely potent. Again, I'm going to ask, what are our weapons? The blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the word of God. Those are the things that we always rely on. But sometimes we need to branch out. We need to stretch ourselves a little bit to begin to learn other things. How can you be fully armed? How can you be totally um, armed and prepared for all battles if you're only using one or two weapons? We have this whole arsenal of things that we're not using because they're not comfortable for us to learn how to use. There's a song that says, my praise is a weapon. My dance is a weapon. It's a weapon, praise is a weapon that we use against the power of the enemy, and he does everything he can to stop it. He'll do everything he can to stop a person from moving into praise. There are churches that fear genuine praise because it'll run off prospective members, or even those comfortable, complacent members. I remember one day I was in service, and all of a sudden I went up in, into an aerial vision, and I began to see um, different houses of God. Some of them I knew what they were. Other houses I didn't know what they were, but I could see the roof being ripped off, and when I looked down in it, I could see the leader. But when I saw the leader, because the leader carried a spirit of Saul, but there were all these other people with a Davidic anointing, and they could not dance because the leader forbade it. The leader did not want to. He, he felt like he would lose control of the service when people began to dance, so they weren't able to. And when we get to that place where we can dance like David danced, where we can be recklessly abandoned before God, regardless of how many mistakes we made, the Davis, we learn that in the story of David, regardless of how many mistakes, if we could just get in front of him and dance with all of our might, you'll dance yourself to freedom. That's one of the things I learned early on. Just dance yourself to freedom, Jenny. In your house, get alone. If you don't want to do it in public, get alone and just dance before God. Dance the shackles off of you. Listen, in the Old Testament, they had crazy weapons. Samson had a jawbone of a donkey. Gideon, he was reduced down to 300 people and had weapons like a water pitcher and a trumpet. Joshua, they had to march and shout. David, slingshot and stones. And Jehoshaphat, I love 2 Chronicles 21, when Jehoshaphat says, nope, hold up, this is what we're going to do. We're going to fast, we're going to pray, we're going to worship and praise. This is how we get our answers. We stop, we fast, we pray. And we praise. One of my most favorite passages in regards to praise and what it does is Psalms 149. And we're going to read it. And we're going to break it down just a little bit. Praise is an overflow of gratitude. Listen, if you're happy about what God has done for you, you're not going to sit in your chair. You're not going to sit down and be quiet. You can't. If God's brought you out of something, you're going to praise him for it. But one thing I've learned, if we praise him beforehand, if we praise him in the struggle, that, that victory is going to be a whole lot better. It's a catalyst to the spirit moving. Psalm 68, 4 tells us to sing to God, sing praises to his name, cast up a highway for him who rides through the desert. His name is Lord, be high in spirit and glory before him. The Passion Translation says, let them sing their celebration songs. Why? Do we struggle to enter into praise? This is something I, that I really just ask the Lord. Why do we struggle to get there? What's, what's wrong with us? Why can't people just get there? And me, myself, I know I, I've done this. I've been guilty. It's because I went into a church service or I went into a conference or I went in wherever I'm going in a bad mood. 
Or I went in thinking, you know what, this this dancing stuff ain't for me. I can't do it. My body hurts. I don't want to do it. Blah, 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 whatever it may, it may be. And this is the answer the Lord gave me, James 5, 13. Let's read it real quick. We all know what it is. Are there any believers in your fellowship suffering hardship and distress? Encourage them to pray. Are there happy, cheerful ones among you? Encourage them to sing out their praises. Why do we go in? Like, what does it mean to be afflicted? If you read that in another version, it said, any, if there are any afflicted among you. Afflicted means that you're ill-treated, offended. We go in with the attitude, we're upset, we're hurt, we're mad, whatever it may be. But if you go into a service feeling that way, you go in or go in anywhere in life, you're spiritually crippled. Why? Because you had an attitude. Because you don't feel like it. Because you feel bad. Whatever it may be. And, and that scripture tells us that when we come together, all we got to do is pray. It's not that hard. Just pray. When we come together as the army of the Lord, we can't have half the troops call out sick because they afflicted and feel bad. We can't do it that way. Our hearts need to be in battle and, and, and in the flow of God's spirit. So if there's any sick, if there's any afflicted, if there's any of us in a bad mood, pray before we go in. Why do we wait till the end of the service before we have an altar call or before we have prayer? Why suffer the entire service? Why not have prayer in the beginning? Get yourself together so you can enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Life gets a lot easier, people. It's a lot better. Praise is a spiritual force against the power of the enemy and the devil will do what he can to keep you defeated the bible tells us for the spirit of heaviness put on the garment of praise praise being, brings triumph over demonic spirits praise says listen I, I don't care what it looks like right now it may look like i'm going through hell it may look like i'm going to be defeated but i'm going to stand here and i'm going to praise my way into victory because if you only knew who was coming behind me if you only knew what was coming behind me, you would understand why I'm praising. Or if you only knew where I came out of, you'd understand why my praise is ridiculous. Let me get back to Psalms 149. I'm going to start in verse 1. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. It's time to sing to God a brand new song. So that all his holy people will hear how wonderful he is. Verse 2. May Israel be enthused with joy because of him. And may the sons of Zion pour out their joyful praises to their king. Another translation of that actually uses the word rejoice. And it means triumph. Shemak. So when you start praising him, you start triumphing. When Saul was troubled by an evil spirit, what did he do? He called David to come praise. Verse 3, break forth with dancing. Make music and sing God's praises with the rhythm of his drums. And I love this scripture because when you look up the word there, it means to dance, twist and turn, or, or to move nimbly. Another uh, Hebrew word means to lip, uh, leap and skip. There's different variations of what it means to dance there. Uh, but one of the things that I love about the Lord is he, had to, he broke it down for me to fully understand it in my, my own mind. Um, and there's a song, I think it's called Almighty Ones, and it says, When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, the darkness flees. See, we've gotten used to, to opening our mouth or quoting scripture at the enemy or, or praying or doing whatever it is. But the Lord asks us, will you do something a little different? Let me stretch you in this area so you can be better equipped for where you're going. So we have to learn how to praise. We have to learn how to dance. The Bible tells us today, there's nothing wrong with it. The Bible tells us to dance. And one of the ways he put it to me is when me and my brother were younger. And we would be doing something we weren't supposed to be doing. No doubt about it. Um, and mom would yell at us and tell us to quit. But if she just yelled at us, we didn't move. We didn't stop what we were doing. But when she began to move her body and move her feet and come towards us, do something different other than just talking, we stopped what we were doing and we left. So when we begin to praise, when we begin to dance, the enemy flees. Darkness begins to flee. I don't know about you, but I can't be uh, sad. I can't be mad. I can't be bound when I'm dancing or when I'm praising. It's not possible. Verse 4, for he enjoys his faithful lovers. He adorns the, the humble with his beauty and he loves to give them victory. His godly lovers triumph in the glory of God. And their joyful praises 
will rise even when others sleep. You can praise him in bed. You don't have to go to a church service. You can praise him at night. You can praise him at home in, in the daytime and the nighttime. Every circumstance, every situation. You're not limited in where you can do it. Verse 6. God's high and holy praises fill their mouths. For their shouted praises are their weapons of war. See, we got to shout. we got to be loud. We can't be quiet. It's like a two-edged sword. High praise means to exalt God. To glorify God. To magnify God out of your heart. It's, it's not how loud you do it. It's, it's not how active you get, but what comes from deep inside you. It's when that praise reaches the surface. See, if it begins in your heart, it has to get to your mouth before it becomes pr pr uh, praise. It doesn't just stay there. If you've got a spirit of praise in your, in your stomach, you've got praise on the inside of you, it doesn't technically become praise until it comes up out of you and it's vocalized and expressed. Praise has to be expressed. Verse 7. These warring weapons will bring a vengeance on every opposing force and every resistant power. Another um, translation says to execute vengeance upon heathen and punishments upon the people. And, and he's talking about the satanic nations, the principalities, and the powers of the devil. Demons are punished and tormented by praise. Like, do you understand what your praise does in the spirit realm? A demon cannot exist in this environment. They, demons have tormented us long enough, so through praise we get to turn the tables and torment them. And it's actually part of God's governmental authority. And the example that I'm going to give you here is for about a month straight, um, my, my whole mentorship, uh, all I said, all, all we're doing is praising. Like, it's easy to sit at the feet of Jesus. It's easy to worship. It's easy to get on our face and, and get at the feet of Jesus and just sit still. It's easy to worship. But it's difficult to praise because our flesh doesn't want to do it. And our mind tells us that we, we look silly or we shouldn't do it or this or whatever it may be. So when you learn to uh, put praise behind your, your warring, when you learn to get violent in the realm of the spirit, when you learn to push and attack and not stand still. Like this whole month we did this and every single time we did it, something manifested. Some kind of demon presented itself because it could not stand that environment. They can't stand to be in an environment of praise. They can't stand to be in an environment that's warring with their praise. See, David knew how to dance. David knew how to war. David knew how to war with his dance. we got to get to that place where we know how to do these things and not just sit still. we got to understand the totality of our weapons of warfare. What are they? They're not just... The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and the word of God. We have other weapons that we need to learn how to use and advance the kingdom of God to push back the darkness and stop being still and allowing the enemy to attack us. Next time you come under attack, do this. Tr dance and see what happens. Praise and see what happens. Put on some music that's going to be upbeat and watch and see what happens. Demons will manifest when we begin to praise in the way that we're supposed to. It's part of God's governmental authority. Let's look at verse 8. Praise no, verse 8 says, to bind kings with chains and rulers with iron shekels. Bind means to keep in prison or to, to restrain by governmental authority or command. When you bind them, you're imprisoning them. You're immobilizing them by governmental authority that we have. Demons have kept us bound for too long. The enemies kept us bound for too long. It's about time that we, we flip the switch and we begin to bind them. And chain them and restrain them so that they can no longer harass us. But that means that we have to get out of a place of being comfortable. Out of a place of sitting there and watching everybody else do it. Out of a place of thinking, oh, I don't have to do this. Oh, bless me, Lord. Saying these weak, little, wimpy prayers that have no real push behind them. And instead of uh, sitting there and being on defense all the time and just trying to ignore everything around you, it's time that our eyes open up in the name of Jesus and begin to see what's coming after us. See how the enemy's attacking us and begin to push it back in the name of Jesus using all of our arsenal, not just a little tiny piece of it. Listen, I done been tormented enough my whole life by demons, by the enemy by his attacks, by the way he does this. or Like, I spent my whole life being harassed. So you better believe that the moment I got free, I said, oh no, not me, not anymore. I'm going to learn what I have to do according to the word of God to begin to push back the darkness because it can no longer stay in my bloodline. It can no longer stay in my family. It stops with me, but that means I have to learn how to use every single weapon that I have. 
I have to learn what my weapons are. The Bible says, we read scripture earlier, they are not carnal. That means nothing in the natural is going to suit me during this time. I got to figure out what it is I have to do in the realm of the spirit. And praise begins to break open things in the realm of the spirit. Your dance will begin to break open things in the realm of the spirit. Let's look at verse 9. I've said every verse is my favorite, but this is probably my favorite for real. Praise filled warriors will enforce the judgment doom decreed against their enemy. This is the glorious honor he gives to all his godly lovers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen. Every believer can defeat the enemy with the weapon of praise. The scripture tells us. Praise-filled warriors. It don't say the apostles. It don't say the prophets. It don't say the pastors. It don't say those that speak in tongues. It says praise-filled warriors will enforce the judgment doom decreed against their enemies. So I don't know about you. But all that does is fuel me even more to get into a place of praise so that I'm constantly filled with it so I can go back and, and invoke judgment or execute judgment upon the enemy for everything that he's done. It has nothing to do with an office. It has nothing to do with an anointing. It just has to do with being praise-filled. That's what the Word of God says in verse 9. Praise-filled warriors. Praise will cause confusion in the camp of the enemy. That's what happened with Jehoshaphat. The enemy got so good. They were surrounded on all sides. Everywhere they looked. It looked like they were doomed. But their praise, their worship, caused confusion in the enemy's camp. And they all just killed each other while they stood there unharmed. So listen, people of God. We got to get to a place where we understand what our praise does. We got to get to a place where we understand what our worship does. We got to get to a place where we understand what our dance does. Listen, it's hard to dance sometimes. Your flesh hurts. Your body aches. My knees hurt, this or that. I don't care if you got rhythm or not. I, like, I don't care about those things. Just You're not dancing for a person. You're dancing for Jesus. And I'm pretty sure his body hurt when he took the beating. Beatings. When he went through everything for us, the least I could do is dance a little bit. The least I can do is vocalize my praise. The least I can do is shout when, when I feel a shout. Sometimes I don't even feel it. I just know I need to do it because that's what's going to break it off of me. Listen, Psalms 35. Let those be ashamed and humiliated together who rejoice at my distress. Let those be clothed with shame and dishonor who magnify themselves over me. Let them shout for joy and rejoice who favor my vindication. And let them say continually, the Lord be magnified who delights in the prosperity of his servant. Was David saving, saying here? He's saying that the enemy is moving in, but he's going to be confused and ashamed and he's not going to advance. Bind the strong man, take the spoil. Don't let the enemy keep you hostage any longer. Enough is enough. Amen? Listen, it's been a pleasure to be here with you today. I'm not going to be much longer. The Lord has said what he, or I've released what the Lord has wanted me to release. Understand that your praise does something. Understand that your weapons are not carnal. And that we have to begin to push back the darkness and stop sitting there and letting it attack us. It's okay to go on the offense. You don't always have to be in the defense. Let the Lord show you. What happens when you begin to dance? What happens when you begin to praise? It gets fun. You're going to begin to see victory in a whole new light. And that's all I have for today. I'll be back with you guys next week. Same time, same place. I hope you all have an amazing week. And listen, I can't close without sharing this with you all. Because I know that I'm not the only person that the Lord's told this to. If you are in need of getting your physically body, physical body healthy, the Lord told me back in March, Jenny, get yourself together. 
You can't go the places I have for you until you're healthy. I said, God, how am I supposed to do this? He gave me a program. Gave me the keys and said, now take other people with you. So not only did I, I, I get myself together, I'm helping other people get together too. I've lost almost 75 pounds since the middle of May. It's crazy. It works. If that's you, if I'm talking to you, reach out to me and let me help you. It's fun. I enjoy it. And it gives me so much more energy and stamina to be able to do what it is God has called me to do. Amen. You guys be blessed and have an amazing day.